What's up guys? I am back for the long awaited part two of the impact video I did about a month ago. Uh, I haven't done it, I've really wanted to do it and I've been thinking about it a lot. I just, there's been rubbish with that snow um, and it's kind of got in the way. And then I went for a walk this morning and I thought, I actually love doing these videos. So I thought, I'm just gonna do it. So here we are, um, part two. It's gonna be really simple. We're gonna look at a bit of rotation. Um, which will hopefully help a lot of you and I'll go through a couple of things which I see quite a lot in most people I teach um, But yeah, enjoy the video. We're gonna get into it now and we'll catch up at the end Okay, so what I see come up a lot in lessons is that when people start on a downswing There's almost a little bit too much lateral slide of the hips in transition um, Hopefully you've kind of got the two bits from the last video of having the face a little bit more square and in a better position on the way down that means, because you've got those two sorted, we can start to rotate better because essentially the club face is in a more secure place to deal with the rotation. If the face is too open or too shut, and then I ask you to try and rotate more, particularly if it's too open, if I try and ask you to rotate more, you may end up hitting it further right because your path might go further left, and more importantly, the face will actually stay open for a bit longer. Okay, so those are kind of your, the two things I said in the last video. See if you can get those down to a T first and then move on to this one, okay? So there's a couple of things with the lateral sway of the hips. If we haven't rotated well enough on the way back, it's a very common cause for the rotation, uh, sorry, lateral shift to the left. But also people tend to think they need to put weight on their front foot, which is a really you know, common thing we see quite a lot. But they do that by really just pushing themselves off over to the left without much thought of how they can rotate through strike. Um, obviously, a lot of you know people like uh, Cameron Champ, unreal ball striker, probably one of the best things on tour in my opinion. Really, really athletic move, um, which obviously creates a lot of power. I mean, he's only a short guy that can get out of there well over 300 yards, like most of them can now. Um, but with the lateral shift, it's like they're trying to put weight forward, but it's just, it can cause hooks, blocks, um, and, and bad strikes typically. So. What we're going to look at today is, is what should happen when you get to the top of the backswing, what should happen from there? And it's pretty simple. I like to see a little bit of rotation first because if you put too much weight in your front foot too early, then it's actually difficult to rotate from that point. So I kind of like seeing a nice load into the right leg where you can feel the pressure pushing down into his right foot and then it's a bit of rotation and then you push off. And the feeling I'm going to give you is to use the floor correctly. Once you've pushed off this foot, it's to start to push and almost try and slide your foot along the floor in that direction, so diagonally forward and left. Because if my foot's trying to push in that direction, it's actually gonna get my left hip to go back behind me, which is definitely what we want. To put it really simply, if I wanna to jump to the left, I need to push off my right foot. If I wanna to jump to the right, I've gotta push off my left foot, okay? If I wanna jump back, I've gotta push forward, and if I wanna jump forward, I've gotta push back. Does that make sense? So it's always the opposite way to where you wanna move. So if I want my left hip to clear behind me, I need to feel like I'm pushing in this direction, okay? Because it's gonna get my hip to do the opposite. So you're essentially gonna set up to the ball, or a practice swing in. So swing up to the top, check your grip and everything first. And then from there, rather than feel like it's a big slide to the left, which often gets us away from the ball, so we have to do a lot with our hands. I want you to feel that as you go back, then you're gonna shift or push in that direction and see if you can get the left hip clearing a little bit a little bit earlier. From there, our shoulders and hands can swing through and the club head is the last thing to get to the ball, okay? When people don't rotate well enough, they'll tend to get the club head to the ball before the body can clear, um, which leaves a lot, of, a lot of issues with strike work. So to get away from that big lateral slide, you're gonna swing up to the top and then from here, you're gonna try and push your foot along the direction um, kind of forward diagonally into the left and then you're going to push back as hard as you can and then you're going to see that lovely posting up of the left leg so you'll see it straighten the left hip will clear behind you and you can get through the ball much much better okay the second thing you can do so that's your feeling you're going to try and push in a certain direction the second thing you can do is actually to give yourself a visual so i tend to like putting this through um, your belt loops if you've got them if not, don't worry, but it's just a nice visual to have. As that goes through your belt loops, you can even do it without a club. I'm going to put the club across my shoulders. 
as I swing up there, you can see I've got a difference between my shoulder rotation and my hip rotation. There, I'm going to try and create a separation between the lower stick and my golf club. Okay, so a lateral shift would be this. Okay, so both those lines are still pretty shut towards my target. Whereas a good rotation would be a separation between the two. And that's rehearsing impact. So my shoulders are relatively square. If not a little bit open, it's fine. But my hips are really clear. And you can see the angle of my hips relative to my shoulders. Okay, if I get those positions, it's much easier for me to rotate through the ball. But this is really nice. A little side note, the brighter the stick, the better in my mind, because it's, it's super, super visual. Okay, if you're doing it without a belt buckle, um, sorry, without through your, without that through your uh, belt loops, um, the first feel is fine. But that second one, it's like it's, it's like you're matching the, the feel you've got with the first one to the actual visual clue of the second drill. Uh, and both of those should get you started on a path for better rotation. Um, for those of you which do drastically slide, like if you give yourself a video or do a video of yourself and you'll come in impact like this, I teach quite a few people who are struggling to get out of this position, it is literally going to feel like you're going to rotate as in pure rotation without putting too much weight forward. Okay, really imagine that camera and chat mood of going up and then squanting and rotating and then finish you all the way through. Okay, and like all the other, all the other stuff, if you can move it, if you, if you can. I can explain it. If you can put it into a full movement rather than just think about one position that you're trying to get with your hips, it makes it much easier. So do a couple where you are thinking of, you know, hitting a position, hips turning, then the club and the hands getting their last, you know, rehearse that position you're trying to get, and then your job is to try and do it as a whole movement. Okay, so it's actually a entire golf swing. I put my nice. Um, it's an entire golf swing, so we're actually going to rehearse what we're doing on the course. But, um, that's more or less it. I'm going to do more, as I said last time, but this time I will actually do more. But effectively, work on those two. I'll go through more. I've got a body track, so I'll probably delve into that at some point as well. But it's just getting used to the fact that you can rotate, and the more you rotate, the more consistent you become. That's the key part, because most, most people think it's the opposite. Most people think, well, if I, put, if I rotate my body more, I'm going to be less consistent, so I'll just use my hands and arms. But in reality, you're going to create more power, you're going to have a better strike more consistently, and you're going to have a better control over your direction, as long as you've done video one, just so you know. So, those three are all benefits to rotating more. It's just, just understanding how you rotate. Okay, so we prefer more rotation and less lateral swing. Okay, but uh, take care, everyone. Um, if you haven't already, would love it if you could subscribe to the channel and drop a like on the video. It would really help me out. I'm going to try and get to 100 subscribers um, in about a week. I think I'm on 80 something. So we'll see what we can do. It's only another 15. I'm sure we can get there. But uh, yeah, I hope that helps. And I'll speak to you all very soon. Take care. Thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Um, if you could subscribe and like the video, that would be amazing. Um, we are limited to just doing back garden stuff at the minute because we're in lockdown in the UK. Hopefully we'll be lifting in maybe the next month or so. But I'm thinking of doing quite a few different things like uh, I might do a bit of fitness stuff. Uh, might do some food stuff, so what I'd eat like pre tournament and all that kind of thing. Um, as well as obviously uh, practice drills in the back garden, bit of technique and all that kind of stuff. So if you like the videos, I'd appreciate the subscribe and uh, feel free to comment below any content you would like to see. Um, yeah, that's it for today. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.